Today what we're doing is um, a muscle restoration effort here at Fort Lewis Lodge. This is the third year we've done the event here in the Cow Pasture River. But basically the purpose of the event here is to try to um, do education and outreach with um, rare species, primarily the James Spiny mussel, which is an endangered mussel that's here in the watershed. Just do some outreach with local landowners and children so they become more aware of some of the rare resources and the importance of those rare resources in their backyards. Well, mussels are nature's water filter. They can filter a bit, a good, strong bed of mussels can filter hundreds to millions of gallons of water a day, which is a pretty much free of charge service that they provide to us, keeping our rivers clean. Historically, before you know the, the advent of plastics, mussels were used um, for buttons on clothing. You know, they were used by Native Americans as tools and also as a, uh, an important food resource. Um, you know, today, they're not used for buttons because we have you know, plastics that are used, but they are used in the cultured pearl industry, you know, freshwater pearls. Um, they'll you know, make a blank from the shell of the mussel, a little bead, and they'll insert that into oysters. And uh, so if you have a freshwater pearl, the inside of the pearl is actually uh, a round part of a freshwater mussel shell. filter out water um, so that the water stays cleaner and clearer and fresher. And then they also um, serve as indicators and help scientists find out how clean the water is. See these little guys here? Those are little mussels. They're about three months old. And this is an adult. This is actually the adult that we used to make the little juvenile mussels from. Mussels release these packets that hold the larvae that look like food to the fish. So the fish see them and they eat them. And when they do that, they release the mussel larvae, which attach to the body of the fish and basically hitch a ride for um, several weeks to even a month. And then they'll drop off in their natural habitat in the river or stream. We're releasing some fish infested with the James Spiny mussel. Can I, can I try to do one? Sure. Can I try to do one? After you, Captain? Now, is the James spiny mussel Whoa, endangered? Whoa, that's a giant. It is. It's a federally listed oh, species. Whoa. It's found in, see, this is the primary can host. I, can I touch it? Bluehead chub. Oh, I like that And it's one. found in Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina. You put it completely underwater. So just let, if you just let it tip it over, good job. Um, well, since there are larvae on them, we hope that the James Spiny mussel will drop off of those fish and that we can start or establish um, another population here in the Cow Pasture River. Yeah, usually the thing I like to try to impart to folks about freshwater mussels is just their importance to show how healthy streams and rivers are. Um, the majority of our freshwater rivers and streams historically have had freshwater mussel populations and over time those numbers have decreased but the, uh, the streams and the rivers you still find good numbers are, are real good for water quality which also um, you know translates into you know, good recreational opportunities for citizens fishing opportunities swimming opportunities things of that nature so um, you know while folks may not see the direct benefit of freshwater mussels in the river you know they may have indirect benefits even a drinking water capacity you know because we get a lot of our drinking water from rivers and streams so if you have freshwater mussel populations there usually it's a good indication that that water is already clean. Yeah.